Hello and welcome to Game Room. I was fortunate enough to sit down and interview with Toshiro Kondo-san, president of Nihon Falcom and producer of Yis A Lacrimosa of Dana. Before we jump in, I just want to say thanks to Kondo-san and the organizers for the opportunity and that the footage on screen isn't from the event, as well as my mistakes with the blog post and naming of the Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel. So without further ado, enjoy. I hope you're doing well, Kondo-san. Uh, I was just wondering, how much traveling have you been doing for the past few days since the game's going to be coming out in a few short weeks? So yeah, he has been having travel recently. Um, the game actually came out already in Asia. So he's gone to uh, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and Korea, South Korea um, to do stage presentations of the game. So quite a bit of travel and promotion recently. And another thing too is that Falcom titles in general are known for their music. Um, they have an in-house band called the JDK Band, who just uh, did a three-concert tour in mainland China in July. So yeah, there's been a lot of promotion overall for this year. I mean, looking at the game, it's very, it's got that whole JRPG vibe of pretty aesthetics. And mm -hmm. I'm not too sure, it looks linear for the time being, but I'm sure as with most JRPGs, it just expands and expands. Right. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good observation. Um, you know, actually not many companies nowadays are really making ARPGs, action yeah. RPGs. Um, and the ones that do kind of make these games that are maybe a little bit on the shorter side. So between, you know, maybe max 20 hours. But first of all, this game has about at least 40 hours worth of it gives enough volume and content in the game. It's not uncommon to see users say that they spent 80 hours playing the game. And the reason is because this game's setting is actually it takes place on an uninhabited, unexplored island. And so during the development phase, it took a lot of care to create a, a really vibrant island that you could spend a lot of time to explore that had lots of different nooks and crannies to it. And so for JRPGs, uh, nowadays especially, he says, he feels that this game has more to offer than almost any other JRPG out there. As I said earlier, I'm relatively new to the whole Yeast franchise, so mm -hmm. I was wondering, because the last game was eight years ago, so right. well, can new, like, fresh JRPG fans be able to sink into this without prior knowledge? Yeah. To give you a little background to the series itself, but by way of answering your question, um, a, a series with 30 year history. And the, the whole setting of East is that we're following the adventures of the red haired main character who he's controlling right now, Adel Kristen. And each East game is supposed to be one of Adel's journals. Every time Adel went on an adventure, he wrote, and he, he left a journal. And so we, as the player, are picking them up and we're reading it and experiencing his adventure. And so within that, um, every place that Adel goes, goes to, there's the beginning where he meets everybody, and then there's the events happen, and then at the end he says goodbye. And so each game actually, each journal is its own contained story. So it's characteristic of Lisa in that um, there's not so many holdover characters where it's like, well, I don't know who these people are, so I can't enjoy the game. There's nothing like that. And the, the game system itself is such that it, it doesn't evolve in a way that you have to have played the previous ones to be able to play this one. So it's very user-friendly for new players who've never played any of the East games before. Just watching this, I've noticed there's quite a few things that the game does that isn't... that's almost automated for ease of access. So for instance, picking up items. Right. Because in some games you have to actively stop, right. pick things up. I mean, most open-world games have that problem of you, you think, oh yeah, I just walk over there and then you just <laughs> stopping and starting constantly to pick right. up items and judging from the combat it's very fluid so right. it's almost reminding me of Final Fantasy 12 I think it was mm. where the combat was part of the actual open exploring. Mm. So think about East, he says, originally East began on PCs okay. and when they first started 30 years ago um, there was a time period where Really, really hard games were kind of the order of the day. And a game was judged positively if it was extremely difficult. And so in the midst of that, Yis came out as a game that, even though it might have had a pretty high difficulty, it was very easy to pick up and play and easy to learn. 
And so ever since that beginning, the, the roots of the series overall is that the player is able to play without stress, without having to worry about all these crazy systems or all these difficult things you have to learn and memorize and master. It's something that players can approach very freely and easily and know that the, the system will be easy to pick up and easy to get into and easy to, uh, to play. Um, in the company, they often talk about, particularly the combat for these, is to have the same kind of feeling as to pop bubble wrap, that, that nice feeling uh -huh. of enjoyment that you get, that you want to keep going and you keep on. It's, it's strange because, you know, doing that has no meaning and there's really no point to it, but it's still fun to do. And so every Ace game, they keep that idea in mind. Is how can we make this just naturally fun without even having to think about it? Um, and so kind of trimming the fat, getting rid of the things that aren't really necessary, um, and making just that absolute enjoyable combat and gameplay system is what they really strive for. Uh, I was just wondering, the art style, because it's almost, I mean, for a lack of a better term, it's very anime okay. in terms of its art style and the way the character's clothing is designed, but right. what about the world itself, like, where's the influences for it? So actually, East was, the original idea was that it was, the world takes place around the same time as the Roman Empire. And if you look at a map of the East world, you'll see it's very similar to a map of Europe. So nowadays, obviously, anime style games are kind of, you know, not, not surprising to come from Japan. Um, however, at the time when East 1 first came out, using this anime style was actually very fresh and very new. And it actually created quite a, uh, quite a, quite a positive stir in Japan at the time, that they used this, this anime style. But because, you know, ever since the beginning, it's kind of had this anime flavor and style to it. That's something kind of that's in the DNA of the series itself. And so that's something that they've maintained throughout the different installments. I'm just looking at the turtle design and the orbs on its back. It feels, it's reminding me of Monster Hunter a bit in terms of its design. Well, specifically for East 8, um, the setting is that you're on this deserted island. Again. And within this deserted island, there are these creatures called ancient species that are kind of modeled after dinosaurs. So that's the reason why they all kind of look like you'll see more bosses as you play the game, but. There's a reason that they look like this. Not not every East is, is like this. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, I feel it was almost reminding me of Final Fantasy and how every time you defeat a big bad, it always go, oh, but here's the bigger bad. Right, right. <laughs> uh, on that point, though, interestingly enough, East is the first game that had huge bosses like like this. It was the first game that actually did that. Not in addition to, to East, there's also you know another. Well, you know, Falcon Ring called Xanadu, and it also had the same thing up here. This started this started this tradition of huge bosses. <laughs> he said, talking and playing at the same time is... <laughs> Very difficult. Yeah. <laughs> Just something about um, the company as a whole, because I know you released tra Trails of... Trails of Heroes Cold Steel 2, and I was just wondering, is... Because you spoke about PC games, is there going? Is the company having a push now to be more PC focused, or is it still home console? Mm -hmm. Because you know, originally the company started as a PC, so there's, there's never really been a time when they didn't want to work on PC. So it's always been you know kind of close to their hearts. The thing is, is that in Japan, um, there's not many people who actually play games on PC. So much so that. It's probably the same for you too, too, but you know you can't really release a packaged version of a PC game. Yeah. However, um, these last few, you know, four or five years, uh, Steam as a as a, a means of distribution has become really big, and so they've pretty much from early on for Japanese developers who release their games on Steam. And so definitely, there's you know there's still a connection to the PC games and the desire to release them on Steam and things like that. And the numbers reflect that too, because uh, looking at the, particularly the outside of Japan, the numbers of people who are you know, purchasing the games digitally on Steam has been very large. And so there's definitely, they understand there's definitely a market there for 
the PC side. So for, for quite a while, over these last four or five years, you know, a lot of the games that they released on Steam were remakes, or, or not remakes, but just the versions of older games. But now, um, it's gotten to the point where, during the development of, of the games, they think about a possible PC conversion and make it so it's easy for the game to be able to be converted to, to PC. And that's definitely uh, thinking about, again, looking at these sales from, from the West and um, seeing the effect that it has on things. That's the, the outcome. I've been following the, I think it's the Marvelous Tumblr blog post, and they've been doing, they've been posting about how they've been porting over the console versions onto the PC, so it's been really interesting mm. to see how it's almost, the porting process has become a lot more streamlined, it looks like, right. from an outsider perspective. Right. Oh. So well, one of the one of the things that probably helps out with that too is that um, even when they shifted development from PC to making games for the PlayStation platforms, um, they would still make it so that it ran first on PC, and then they would just kind of go back to the uh, PS the PS platform. So I said it, it's kind of good luck that that's how they how they developed <laughs> games because then it allowed them to you know as you've seen be able to make games work on the PC. And then. He said, probably not a lot of users are aware of this, but actually a lot of the games that they do come out in package versions for PC in China. So there's actually a pretty good market for that. So being a, being a PC maker from the very beginning has kind of put them in a good position overall as they've kind of re-emerged as, as a PC game developer as well. Just out of curiosity, is the company even thinking about consoles like the Switch or even the 3DS from Nintendo? Because We've seen now that the Switch has been so popular with is older installments of games. So for instance, the Trail series, I think it's called The Legend of Heroes, that's yes. the main franchise name. Are we going to see that as well as the Yeast franchise move over to the Switch potentially? Well, definitely as a developer, it's their wish that as many people as possible you know, will play their games. Um, however, Falcom is, is not very large in terms of uh, staff. There's not a lot of people there, so they have to kind of balance that desire to you know, have many people play their games with, you know, developing what they can develop for. <laughs> I'm just thinking, ah, I want to eat crap now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a question that I just ask everyone I interview, and that is, um, what food would best describe you? Um, as a company or as a person? As a person. Uh -huh. He's never thought of it that way. He's thinking. He said, well, for one thing, he knows that it wouldn't be a really complex flavor. It would be a, a simple flavor. Ah, he said sashimi. <laughs> He's the kind of person where he is, he is, you don't need to put a lot of different ingredients or seasonings in there. However, there's, you know, delicious sashimi, you know, it's gross. Even though it's just, you know, raw fish. So, especially with regards to game development too, that's, that's what they go for. Just to make sure they look the, the good fish, and it's good, tasty. I don't know if that answers it properly, but that's, that's the answer. <laughs> It's it's one of the more humorous ones. <laughs> so, well, he, he did his best to squeeze that one out there. So. <laughs> the really fancy stuff. He'll leave that to the bigger developers to, to uh -huh. use those as examples. <laughs> I mean, what would you? I mean, what would you describe the lead developer then as a dish? Ah, ah, he says <laughs> he's the lead, actually. Oh. So he already described. <laughs> he says, however, the, even the sub leader, though, you know, this game, they share the same you know, philosophy, essentially. So it's probably very similar. And it's, you know, the, the core of especially the games they make, and the ease in particular, is that it's, it's very simple at, at, at heart. So that's what they are very simple. It's a game where people who've never played before can pick up and play and enjoy it and, and do well, and that's what it's meant to be. However, just because you know newcomers can pick it up and enjoy it doesn't mean that veteran players or people who prefer a little bit more difficulty can't play and enjoy it. Um, quite the contrary, there's a lot going on in this game, and the systems are very deep if you spend the time to learn them. So it really is something for everyone. So, again, I mean, looking at, you know, sashimi or sushi, thinking about like, well, all it is is just cut raw fish. You have to understand that, you know, there's different levels of it. There's a lot going on there. So, again, in the same way, that's the way he and the team and the East are like.
what's your what's been the favorite game then that you've released apart from this one obviously you're quite from well even to go beyond the game that he didn't even make but that the company made um, what caused him to get into you know the way company and love so two answers one is the um it's part of the legend of hero series and it's, in english it's called the, the prophecy of the moonlight witch or in japanese the uh White Witch, um, and he loved the story of that game. He found it really moving, really good, and so you know that's what caused him to want to work at this company. And so then the games that he's made, because he entered, it will be within the same overall arcing series, The Legend of Heroes, and the game would be the, the first game that he made from start to finish, which was uh, Trails in the Sky. Uh, what other titles, or would you want to have if you could have it to like produce a game from? Sorry, uh, that's a bit funny. I, I think it's your game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he's thinking about it. He said, it's, does he choose something that he knows he's good at, like an action RPG or a story based game or something totally outside of that he's something he's ever done before? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the PlayStation 1 era was a really interesting era that tons of different types of genres of games came out. There was actually a game that came out that had to do with uh, mountain climbing. Oh. It's like, it's very, it's very poetic. Like literally it would be like the, the white place where one sit. And the, the image obviously is you're up among, at the top of the mountain among the clouds, sitting there, you know, enjoying the beauty of nature. And then it's a simulation game of which there's nothing else like it where you pay money to build a team of, of climbers. You have to find the way to get to the top of the mountain. So that's what he'd like to make, at least something like that. Something that I mean, there's really no comparison to it would be the kind of game that you want to make if you can make it. So something in that. <laughs> or, or, for example, going off your earlier question, maybe a game where you like run a sushi shop or something. <laughs> I'm just imagining like the opening of to Rise of Tomb Raider, where you're climbing up the snow mountain, but with the aesthetic. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Personally, he actually. Um, I'm glad like he's actually so. yeah. I mean, what type of experience have you got with mountain climbing? Uh, Japan doesn't really have mountains as big as Europe, but there are several mountains over 3,000 meters in Japan. He's climbing those, so pretty, you know, fairly decent size for a, for a mountain. I mean, what's been your most favorite, or the one that you have the most, that you cherish memories for? It's not a mountain that he's climbed, but um, as a child he went to Nepal, and there's a mountain called Annapurna, and um, he saw that, he, he was really moved by that, so that's kind of what... Uh, so he doesn't know if there are a chance to find a special mountain. There's actually a stage where he's able to climb a really big mountain, so he said maybe there's some influence from there as well. You know, there's some stories, some story bits that go along with that part too. And so a lot of his own personal experience, uh, mountain climbing went into that part too. I assume he's just going to go there at some point during a holiday to climb it. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to describe it because it looks like, because I've only had a hands-on impression with Cold steel. Okay. But I mean, I can't. I guess Hyperdimension Neptunia would be the closest thing to this feel, but it is still mm -hmm. not like an ARPG that right. he's just totally creating right. in this. Same so the the so one thing about you know, Cold Steel, for example, is that that's a story that, or that's a game that's very, very story focused. And um, a lot of the systems in the game are actually there because of the story, and so they're made to, you know, because of the story. However, um, in contrast, East is actually, you know, the main part of the game is the combat and, and the battle system. And so it's a game that because, again, the, the aim is for, you know, newcomers and veterans alike to be able to play and enjoy. Um, that's something that they think very carefully about when they this game. So, again, really the action is the focus, uh, combat's the focus of the East games. Very, I don't know how to, other than just saying, <laughs> It's really, really beautiful, actually. So you're noticing um, sometimes this flash guard and this flash move will come out. If you if you guard or dodge at the, at the appropriate time, those will come out, and it gives you a really big advantage. And that flash guard means you won't take any damage, um, even if he hits you. And then fl and flash move means that the enemy will slow down, so that you can get more like bonus hits on them. 
Oh, wow. so that's kind of one of those things that he said is for the advanced players. So like the, the your average player will obviously be able to beat this boss without e using either of those techniques if they don't know. But uh, the players that are maybe a little bit better will really enjoy really mastering these two systems so that they can uh, you know get the most out of the combat system. As well. So there really is a lot for all levels of skill. Much of the flash color, flash color. <laughs> he kind of apologizes, like he has to pay really close attention because he's a boss, so it's difficult. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> he said he should have leveled up more. <laughs> it looks like there's a nice balance of player skill as well as to almost stat management. He said, yeah, um, people who are really good at this game, they, they can clear without you know necessarily taking damage. He said there's certain players in Japan who are better than the developers themselves, better players than the devs themselves. He says it's great because you know once the PS4 version came out in Japan, that's allowed a lot of people to film their, their, their play style and then to upload it. And it's been a really cool thing for the develop them as the developers to see is how people are uh, and East has been something like that back when it was a PC game to people who would record their play styles and upload the videos. Surprisingly there's lots of people who actually you know, can beat the last boss. Um, without taking any damage. So, so that's something I always, I always enjoy seeing. He says, for the East games that are the most, uh, on, the, on the highest difficulty settings, there's usually only one person inside the company who can beat it on the level. <laughs> Whereas there's lots of, you know, players, you, users who can, you know, beat it on the, on the highest difficulty settings. Remind me of when I went, first went to Japan and tried out all of the rhythm games and I saw people just going on like the most insane. I'm like, Whoa, that's so what? Oh, that's the this is. Yeah, is it even you know, games like really like uh, Taiko? Oh, yeah. Like, so you see kids in you know, elementary school and middle school, and they're just like amazing. It's like a watching drama. <laughs> Every time I see an arcade in the UK, I'm always going, it's not like Japan. <laughs> I'm curious, are there, are there arcade games in Japan that the company has made? Or is it? Yeah. 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 They always kind of focus on not getting on PCs, yeah. they yeah. never actually yeah. made arcade games. Uh, so, however, when he was a kid, he loved arcades, he played lots and lots of arcade games. So. He really liked uh, Samurai Shodown. Yeah. Did you guys get that one, the SNK game? I don't it's think a, so. It was a fighting game, and the motif was like Samurai. And it was like, it was like weapons combat. Did you get an actual sword with it? Well, every character had their own weapon. But it wasn't like Soul Calibur in that. Oh, uh, I, I think I that did come over. It's like, pretty old. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty old. It might be a little bit before your time, depending <laughs> how old you are. I'm only twenty. Okay, yeah, I'm not twenty. 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 Oh. Yeah, I don't. He says I don't think he's gonna be able to beat it, but this is probably a good. This is the end of the demo anyway. So ah, okay. It's probably a good place to, to stop. He said the E series itself is actually thirty years old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but again, you don't have to go back to the yeah. first one. You can start here. So. <laughs> I think I'd have difficulty trying to get the original. One. Yeah, that's true too. <laughs> But again, the action is very simple. There's many people, in, even in Japan, that prefer to use these. Please feel free to jump in here and get to some these. <laughs> yeah, so please you know, let people know that too, so people don't feel yeah. intimidated by having a, a, a number like 8 or 30 year history. <laughs> I mean, I know that's the one one of the problems with Final Fantasy currently is that apparently I think there was a survey done a year or two ago where most people didn't try it because it was on like right. the double digits and people were going, are they all like following on from each other? Or? Right, right. Fifteen. Just got a chop door too. Just the way it Yeah. So don't worry about that. <laughs> he says, well, you know, one one issue too is of course it's easy for them as a developer to say, oh no, 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 you have to play the other ones, but he understands that still, you know, for users. Seeing that number next to it, it can kind of be like, whoa, 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 I don't know about this. And this is that's the good thing about nowadays that you have social media because a lot of the people that did play the game starting from eight hopped online on like you know social media and said, don't worry guys, you totally can't start from this one, and it's okay you don't need to play the game. So the fans have done a lot of promotion for it. He said, so yeah, again to go back to that analogy of the uh, of popping the air bubbles, it's like you know everybody enjoys that. There's no one who doesn't. In the same way, pretty much anybody who Likes RPGs and likes games, picks up EEs, they enjoy it, so definitely enjoy.
So that was my interview with Kondo-san. Before I end off, I just wanted to add a quick first impressions of the game, having sunk 8 hours as of recording. The game is very open and doesn't feel like there are any holdovers from previous titles, with the combat being easy to understand and does feel like bubble wrap whilst playing. Playing on normal mode, it doesn't feel too hard and so far doesn't feel grindy. I did however get lost for an hour because I kept on misreading my map. Overall, I'm really enjoying the game for what it is and hope to get my review out soon. I've been Noam from GameGrin and thanks for watching.